Okay, welcome back to another episode of Disco Elysium. Let's get out of the store. Uh, I think we talked to everybody through in here. All these cats. The worn and beaten wood planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Huh, we can sit on benches after we solve the murder. Let's go. Tutorial agent, you can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass time when the lieutenant is gone. Mail collection box. This post laventure -er. mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffiti. -o. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. A faint sticker on the side reads RCM Emergencies Desk Number 08102, a slogan Mankind Be Vigilant. Good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. Eat shit, pig. Fuck by the cun, St. G. With a crown of been scribbled on it, Genie is a whore. Hmm. I feel you, mail collection box. Yield morale. Tire tracks leading to the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. Ancient fountain doesn't pump water in it. There's a tree in it. Wow, this place is pretty big. Let's not go this way. Bottles inside, you can pick them up if you had a bag. The book is a rose, a pistol, a half naked dome on its cover. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. The book is titled Man from Helms, Helms Doll and the Wildfire. is about pate. This book you don't understand what it's about, nor is it important. This book is about audio culture. culture. About freedom. The book's about the future. Go and read your mind using radio technology. You memorize the title. Laos. 87 Radio City. Seems important. Okay. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Are you interested Hello. in a new and exciting book? Can I it's store this anyway? Store, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Books, postcards? Easy. If I s Even a kid would know all this. Little girl, I know what a book is. Books are like long, very long letters with stories inside them. That's exactly it. I also know what a postcard is. A small cardboard picture you can send to a friend or loved one. <laughs> you got it, sir. What about board games? Hmm. Who cares about board games? No one. Okay, sir. This was all very enlightening. Can I help you with anything else? Ask okay, you questions? Sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mom. Her name is Palisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register or organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts her eyes wide, as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signaling the store's open. 
Otherwise, people would might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. You're such a good trooper. You are already learning the value of hard work. Thank you, sir. I'm here to help my mom hold this, help my mom out with a store. She stands upright like a little soldier. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mom keep this place running. What is school anyway? School? Well, mine's a big yellow building on Boogie Street. And the people there run it. They say it's a charity. Isn't going to school more important than this? My mom says it's necessary to do both. It builds character. Mom says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. How's the business going? Mom says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first, and there was talk about this house being cursed. Cursed in what way? Cursed in a way that makes them say that the, no business has ever thrived here. That they all go, she looks for the right word. Bankrupt? Exactly. We've been doing fine, but we've been doing fine so far. Sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much here to look into. Yes, please look at our wares inside. Postcards and board games are there, sir. Do you know about other filled businesses? Nothing really. Mom doesn't allow me to sneak around the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's in there. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it was appropriate to stand on the freezing weather. But Kim, the pl plasmic manifestations, no such thing. Uh, enough about the curse for now. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is, is about murderers or burglars or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime or catch a criminal. Wait, not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is. Uh, it's that bad. Point to your head. <laughs> crime is what we're solving before we begin this conversation. Would anyone want to read about crime? Oh, it's it's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things, kind of like a puzzle. Where you can guess who the criminal is, or who the good guys are, are going to catch them. I'm a policeman, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. She examines you as if to find something policeman-like. Okay, then, maybe I'm not a policeman, or I should stop being one. I didn't mean to offend, sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover, which you see a strapping... Vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. I used to be exactly like that Mullen guy, and then I decided to live a little. What's that mean? You know, cut loose, raise hell, blow off steam, and everything's better now? Uh, I don't know. Why is that? Look at me, a hideous beast, a failure of a cop, a disgrace. Sir, please, sir, don't say things like that. You look nice enough. Nice enough for a small child, sure, maybe. Don't be sad, sir. I'm sorry I said the thing about Dick Mullen. It's not your body that's important in police work, it's your head, yes. No, your mind. Not heads, child, heads. Flexibility. There are millions of different people out there, and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you gotta be, gotta be the killer to catch the killer. Isn't that very dangerous, sir? Oh, I guess it's unlocked, huh? Is it unlock. Breakthrough imminent. The policemen live, live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen well, obviously lacks the chameleon skill. Unlike you, sir. He's just a fixer character. He's no match for you. Okay, I'm going to do something right now. The girl keeps her hands folded, folded hidden. Why is that? Hey, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? 
You can show them to me. She, she looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking, looking at the two of you with a little, with a little interest. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails are frayed. Shoot, shoot down to the flesh. You bite your nails. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? Yes. That proves nothing. Anyone can have such an easy deduction like this. Want more? Why well, bet I could figure out why you bite your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. <laughs> Rats have been nibbling on your fingers, child labor. In dismal working conditions. It means you're recycling your own body material. <laughs> You're uptight because your mother's been putting pressure on you. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a habit, bad habit, and I shouldn't. Either way, it's another ace deduction by the number one detective in town. It was okay, sir. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You think so? Fine, do better. To do something for me. You're quite sober. She steps back quickly. The tension does not flick, flinch at the comment. He does flinch even does not flinch even a single bit bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. Wait, how do you know I'm usually not? Because you usually aren't. <laughs> yeah, about that. Maybe you could point me towards some booze. Uh frit, maybe? Alcohol's not good for you, sir. There she stands, swinging her feet, assaulted by early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation feels suddenly familiar somehow. What is romance? It's a type of book where there's a rich lady. She has to choose between good and men. Good man and a bad man. She smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in the situation. Or there could be a story about a poor lady, a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? It happens, but Usually the guy gets rich in the process, or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly, like during a revolution or something, I see. Those unhappy books for the those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People are sad about what they have lost, but then it turns out to find in the end. What about when both of the men are bad? These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a strong story like that. What if it's written well? Well, maybe it's fine. Maybe if the lady decides not to pick either, because she does not doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that'd be interesting. What about when everyone's poor? That's not proper romance story. It's more like everyday life. Sometimes you have to write about real things, not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people. Everyone is happy in the end. What about where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe she asked mom. Yeah, do you think she has one about excruciatingly painful breakup? I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. She pauses, trying to figure out the appropriate answer. No, think about it. One where they purge into a torrent of spiral pain and rec recrimination. Oh, only it's really long and drawn out, scared for life, phantom limb. Um, no? Uh, doesn't ring a bell? Bell? All right, I'll ask your mom. Yes, she knows books, definitely. Enough about romance. Who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens of generals or artists or musicians. Those kinds of people. There are usually something extraordinary about them. I think that's why people read books, to find secrets of their fame. Seems like people who read books fail to get more famous from reading them. Readers of these books don't make the readers more famous, does it? but it does make the famous people more famous, she says. Famous sounds delicious. Maybe someday I'll, well, we will write a book about me one day. Why would they do that, sir? I'm not going to be a superstar cop. Hmm, why indeed? I'm just an old, tired cop. What use am I? You're not that old. Maybe you'll do something really important. Something that wows the world. You think so? Yes, there's hope. A lot of famous people got to be famous. Or even after they died. That sounds like a nice story to tell yourself at night. Maybe fame isn't that important after all. What are you missing here? I feel familiar. 
Hmm. Thought complete. Inexplicable feminist ag agenda. There's something you need to see, sir. We have found the remains of an ancient artifact lodged in the... Your hippocampus. It's a cylindrical object, piss withered and, and smelling of liquor. The paint is peeling off, but you can clearly make out the letters. Revolutionary feminist agenda on the hall. It appears some time ago. It appears that some time ago, before you became a joke, you were an actual feminist. But somehow you but somehow you've come to that conclusion. Perhaps you can work your way back. Plus one empathy could ease could evolve into RFA. Minus one electrochemistry. Chemical. Electrochemistry would have to quit drugs to get there. All right. I'll save it now for missing more conversations up. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Why does what's missing? Why does this feel familiar? You have absolutely no idea. Familiar how? You must have forgotten something you've heard. Locked. Put points in suggestion. That's fine. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. Be welcome. And please take responsibility <clears throat> for the energy you bring into this space. Before we go on, you seem well off enough. Can you give some money? I feel there won't be an opportune moment to ask you later. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. These certainly are good points to be said about dependence. It would forge good ties between us working people. Good, good practice for fighting our common enemy. <laughs> you must understand I'm a powerful feudal lord and demand tribute. It was about traditions. Now, hey there! Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. Tribute? Power? These are not the traditions we're used to in this part of the world. I can Sir, keep asking you. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Forge and good Now, hey there! Sat fighting? Enemy? My philosophy is everyone just getting along. Sir, one has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. You're damn right. What kind of business exactly. would that be? In this kind of business relationship, I could come and critique your work any time. I could demand things from you, limiting your creative freedom. We wouldn't want that. So you're a store I owner? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Uh, what if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything's on the shelf to browse. You don't con Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She feels her pendant. Then waves her bony fingers directly at you. See those shelves? Go, go be drawn. What type of books do you have? All right, I'll take a look. The girl outside mentioned this place is cursed. Cursed? Who said that, Annette? I'll have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? Your daughter's the one sitting outside the store, right? Annette? Yes, my daughter. I, I hope she wasn't slacking off with her nose in science fiction. Tell me she was at her post doing her job like a proper girl. Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did, did you talk to her? Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? 10. She's very polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. I guess she's a troop, all right. Looks like she can take it, but she's actually—you're actually—it's actually wearing her down. You know, she's biting her nails. 
God, I told her not to do that. Such a disgusting habit. She'll get over it. Anxiety is part of life. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can't if she has enough willpower. It's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life gives you hard breaks. Go on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You're placing unnecessary burden on this child. It is true, and obviously the will of the market, but maybe you can make an exception for your daughter. She stands stiff and severe, severely silently fuming. Ten or seconds to pass. She's looking f she's looking for one, but simply any good arguments to make for being an asshole. All of a sudden, she sharply exhales. Shows some down. Oh, no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband. He tries to reach... Teach me business lessons. I have... My mother calls a dull mind. All the stress. She stops moving her mouth. Is this husband Annette's father? Yes, my husband's a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off the Grand Curran. Grand Curran, what's that? It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Janrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings here are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the future crowds. Crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's involved, also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Then he's been what you call, might call a silent partner. Super silent. Inaudibly so. Is she an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had... She paused for a second. No, we can't afford more children, really. Not in this economy. A glimmer of sadness break blinks through the well-crafted exterior. Why not? We're quite busy people, you know. My husband and I are quite busy. Children are a lot of work. And you, don't have, and you don't look like a father, so don't expect you to understand. She catches herself, so I'm sorry. I'm sure you do understand. She told me she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me. So she stayed at home this trimester. It's a temporary solution, of course. I assure sure you of all people understand the importance of education. She'll be back to school the moment the store takes off. All right, something else in mind. Farewell for now, book peddler. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to Crime... Gift books and molten candy. The Man from Him Himjdal series. The display rack is brimming with worn paper books, paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Himjdal somewhere. Mr. Keeper, tell me about Muscleman books. Oh, Man from Himjdal, a very popular series of adventure novels. He looks at you with the book with disdain. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Blonde... Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those little imagination and nothing to do. Sounds good. Which one I start with? Why does it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer's always right, they say. If you're a novice in the series, I'd recommend Himjaw, the man from Himjaw. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Look at the display of books. R Rows and rows of Himjolinarian men blur your vision. You make out some of the titles. Man of Himjol and the M Mammoth Riders. Man of Himjol. Returned Himjol. And the Slophicistic. Man from Himjol and the Himjolin men. Oh good, how many are there? Maybe a hundred? Man from Himjol and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Himjol and the False God. Man from Himjol and the Scorched Earth. Man from Himjol... The Himjol and Colonies, Man from Himjol and the Swamp Beast, Man from Himjol and the Snow Crabs. Is that all? Not even close. Man from Himjol and Hell, Man from Himjol and the Forest Slaves, Man from Himjol and the Under the Lake, Man from Himjol, Himjol Burning, and there's even the death, Trial of Death. A pastoral combat game book set in the world of Himjol and so much more. <laughs> Pain Threshold. Do any of these books call out to me? Nothing of interest. Hmm. 
Hmm, looks like she's inside now. Old magazines. Book collections of the NASA recipes of Arda. They're about lake trout. Mountain of board games, a small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games to play for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Warl-related merchandise. Store keeps what board games do you have here? Wonderful board game, sir. Fitter Culturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you don't you'd like our Geos of the Insalude, a very educational game for those interested in geography. Rabbiture is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. You have games with the whole family. You can play with your children. Look at me. Who'd want to have children with me? Don't be so hard on yourself, sir. You just need to clean yourself up a bit. And technically, friends are a bit like family. She fiddles with her pendant. For fun playing with friends, I recommend Suzerandity, a civilization building game where you build a civilization and set off to brutally colonize our plus over other civilizations. Cost 10, 12 real. What about all these win roll things? Lousy R's they are. No role playing games are popular among those types, you know, who were into building, who were into all kinds of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. Further turn people into occult enthusiasts. They have rituals where you try to summon entities. Highly they have moral stuff. You can still buy them, though. She looks at the table, crossing her arms. Looks at the piles of that material. And then this variety of source books, lore books, and codicides. A little at the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, Second Edition. It's also a large handbook handbound tome with an intricate cover hunters of Katruk boreal creature compendium and a pick your path adventure board game called tales of the we're all cavern of valkrag books in the board game section who wants to read books and they catch my eye there's a box that says we're all third edition mega setting supplement module panel note says fantastic adventure board game new maps and miniatures a sticker on it displays 25 real. Right, let's save it again. I think I got all this shit downstairs. You see a tattered curtain it's blocking the way to another room. A strange cage like trinket dangles from the curtain. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Shopkeeper, what's behind these curtains? Nothing. Now, please go back to browsing books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She almost speaks as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly, the curtains... Oddly, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. She seems to come out a charm and a, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with an empty eye socket stares at you. From the looks of it, this is a traditional Siamese ward meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Who are the Simonese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme. The Simonese Islands down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there's nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains are remained shut before you. Pull open the curtains. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, Petra voice, voice of the shopkeeper cries out with more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits to the customer. Her hand closed around the pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologic speaking, if we're done... If we're... We're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks so... Perception hearing such a way. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? What about this curse? Is that why you're afraid? No, it's... No, please just step away from the curtain. It's almost begging you. Alright, let's step away. Thank you. Let's just talk about it first, alright? There's no reason for adventure into the unknown. Talking is always good. Let's go see what she has to say. Hello, 
Hello again, esteemed officer. And You're... welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you it's a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. So let go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She recites it like a poem where she's playing a role she's got grown tired of. Why are you talking about the books? Are you trying to put a spell on me? A spell as if. This place doesn't need any spells or hoodoo mumble jumble. This place is a wonderful energy. She waves, wavers your gaze, your mouth, her mouth pressed into a tight lipped smile. Then something breaks. Okay, fine. This place is cursed, like Annette said. They don't call it Doom Commercial Area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her, pen her pendant. Host of hosts, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does this curse manifest itself? Oh, break through a minute, hobo cop. The curse is so much more worse than you can imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin, and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Everyone knows that the previous companies in the building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy, bankruptcy and their malicious spirits are still here, feeding off bad business practices practices and disappointing income statements <laughs> there's something wrong with this building i can tell you ever since i arrived i sensed an eerie lingering presence if it was unwanted here why don't you just tell me right away it's the why didn't you just tell me right away it's the curse it's not good to talk about the curse not in detail the negativism it's dangerous talking about the void void wraith angers them wow void race you have new words have you sought help from anyone? Yes, I've contacted numer numerous para-psychologists and even a Paris Simonese meditators. They've provided me the, with wards. She nods at the strange cade-like trinkets on the curtains. The wards help me keep keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even now I fear it's not enough. And your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this? She holds a pendant in her palm. No, it's a special Himalayan or Him Himayan? Himayan amulet blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's, it, it's to compel people to buy buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. She nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert pygmy shaman sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of pig people. Doesn't seem like the spell is wor working. There are no customers around except you. There are hardly any customers in the store. Do you think it's working? Sir, I'm well educated in the commercial and esoteric arts. I know what to, what to do and what to avoid. You ever thought about a sale? Maybe I could bring in customers. Just get my wares. I could see, sir, that you don't value books high, very highly. Besides, that would only tempt, tempt the phantoms of doom. They can see since desperation, you know. Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't know anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to be involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this calls for, a paradetective. Convince her to let you investigate. Slither, slither up to her, your silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perdurfery looks like. Ma'am, I've come to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? I don't think I've seen charlatans. Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I've returned from the void, a paradetective, a long line of paradetectives. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one. You're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but you look like one. 
He's gonna keep his usual stony calm. He sounds. He silently picks out his notebook. I'm a mitt. I haven't had my share of drinks, but it's only because the spectral realm is so parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all of this? Here we go. Your roar, your words brought me here in the first place. This the Simonese blood runs through me. Oh, you're part Simonese? Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. But I'm afraid I'm not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. Are you certain you can help us feel... Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The Phantoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our, you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? <laughs> I'm not feeling it anymore. The psychic forces left me. On my honor. Thank you. There's one more thing I haven't told you about. The entity. Do not act surprised. You know these things, sir. Of course, the entity. I have foreseen. I've seen its presence. I've sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes f the form of a woman. A witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I saw her. Did you know she lives inside the chimney? The chimney. The passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes. The chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She's she has barricaded herself in some metal curtains. Some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all these comp companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? The key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please, do return to me after you've looked around. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you what you discover in there. What you discover is probably just some spare office. Don't be scared. Questions about the curse. All good. Okay. Later. Fire complete hobo cop. Technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you. To the bar. The old... La Samour, the pier, to, or to the pier sewers, to Le Royale, f where for 300 years they, in, they interned the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt bourbon that fight Armican beast that lurks behind the bottom most specters. The secrets of the city are yours at last. Reveal all the specters collected items. Reveals extra special collector's edition tar bottles on the map. More money from selling tar. Learning cap for shivers is raised to six. Eh, none of those are terrible, I think. Head in the clouds. Whatever happened to this guy? Unlockable. I don't care about that thought. Alright, that's a good stopping point. Save it. Right, thanks for watching. See you next time.